to the May 19th meeting of the, excuse me, the Farm Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair recognizes the attendance and always helpful assistance of our staff members, Kevin and Alyssa, Mark, Amy, and Susan, and the abandonment of Jen. The chair recognizes the attendance of all commissioners except Amori. Therefore, Pat is being promoted up. Um, like to remind you guys that for commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time. Let's try not to speak over each other. And that all votes have to be done by roll call. So when I call your name, please state your name and your vote. And even though it's maybe redundant, even if you're the one that made the motion or the second, still gonna call for your vote. To our public participants, there will be an opportunity for public comment for each hearing. If you'd like to comment on a particular hearing, you may submit any comments or questions via the chat function once that hearing has been opened. At the appropriate time, I'll call for public comments and any submissions will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are posted on the agenda. First up is other business update by Mayflower Wind on the 2021 geophysical surveys. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted Christopher Hardy to present Chris, do you have anyone apart, uh, anyone else on your team you want me to promote? Uh, Kelsey Perry, please. Okay, I've also promoted Kelsey Perry. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Great, thank you for having us. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen in just a moment, but just to reintroduce Myself, I know we've been with you all before, but my name is Kelsey Perry and I'm the community liaison officer for Mayflower Wind. Chris? Oh, uh, thank you, Kelsey. And I'm Chris Hardy uh, and I'm the uh, external outreach manager for uh, Mayflower Wind. And we're very pleased to speak with you again. Great, so we are going to give you all a quick update on our current geotechnical and geophysical survey work that's currently being completed offshore. Um, and I am going to start the presentation and Chris will pick up halfway through. So I know many of you have heard this presentation before, but for those of you who have not, we are a joint venture between Shell and Ocean Winds. Ocean Winds is a new collaboration between two renewable energy companies, EDP Renewables and NG. And together, our sponsors have decades of experience um, working in um, these large scale offshore energy development projects. More about Mayflower Wind as a company, we are, of course, um, first and foremost, committed to investing in the local host communities we are in. We're looking to build responsible and transparent relationships with the local communities um, by supporting economic development, contributing to STEM and renewable education, um, workforce training, and so on. Our top priority at Mayflower Wind is zero harm, um, and it will be zero harm throughout all phases of this project. We are committed to treating employees, um, the community, and surrounding waters and ecosystems with extra care and precaution in everything that we do. And lastly, we're guided by innovation and industry development. So as offshore wind technology continues to improve, um, this will drive down the costs. And we really aim to be a leader in this new industry, um, which is consistent with us coming into Falmouth, um, a town with such a strong scientific culture, as you all know. Here are a few more specifics about the Mayflower Wind Project. Um, since you've last seen us, we updated this graphic to now have two landfall sites, um, Shore Road and Worcester Avenue. Um, so our lease area is in the dark blue rectangle at the bottom there. And the actual wind farm will be 30 miles south of Martha's Vineyard and 20 miles south of Nantucket. 
Um, and the lease area has the potential to generate up to or over 1600 megawatts of clean energy. The power will be exported through um, an underground cable that will run underneath the beach, um, continue underground and service miles inland and an onshore substation. And this is where I'm going to hand it to my colleague, Chris. Well, thank you for that, uh, Kelsey. And um, a project of this sort uh, naturally uh, has to conduct a wide variety of, of surveys and studies in preparation for the permitting and the regulatory process that will occur at the federal, state, and local levels. Uh, and so since uh, 2019, uh, Mayflower Wind has been conducting a, a wide range of, of studies of the physical environment, the flora and the fauna, as well as the socioeconomics uh, of, of the various communities on shore uh, and, and those um, in, involved in, in the offshore uh, as well. Uh, and so the studies that we're going to update you on tonight uh, build on uh, a lot of and, and uh, are part of a, a much larger uh, package of technical evaluations that uh, we are conducting during this phase of the project development. Uh, and so that uh, is sort of a, a, a duplicate of what have I, I just said, um, but uh, you know, that going into the uh, the details of the of the dates. But uh, we and we were pleased to speak with you all. Uh, I believe it was last uh, spring uh, when uh, we had a similar campaign as this uh, in 2020, uh, when we uh, were conducting some of the nearshore uh, eelgrass surveys, uh, and uh, this year. Uh, we are further uh, beyond that. Next slide, please. Ah, and here's uh, the 2021 uh, geophysical survey campaign that just kicked off in April, April 19th. And um, the vessel you see here noted the, um, uh, the uh, westerly was, um, has been conducting work. Uh, visitors who are going along some of the beaches in Falmouth, Falmouth Heights Beach or Surf Drive Beach, uh, may see uh, the westerly about about a half mile uh, off uh, from the from the shoreline, uh, just out beyond where the uh, known extent of the eelgrass beds is, and that's part of their work uh, is to utilize sound techniques, largely a multi-beam uh, echo sounder uh, that uses sound to uh, help acquire data about the uh, surface and the subsurface uh, as Mayflower. Uh, continues to evaluate the export cable route that Kelsey mentioned uh, and as it approaches the near shore environment uh, and areas that we can avoid uh, so as to minimize you know any any impacts to them and so that's the type of studies that uh, this vessel is conducting about a half mile uh, from the shore in Falmouth and that visitors uh, to the beaches may see however this uh, vessel uh, hopes to complete its work uh, in that area um, before Memorial Day, uh, so that it can join the other two vessels that you see here, uh, the Go Pursuit uh, and the Go Liberty, uh, which are conducting uh, other types of geophysical surveys, a wide range, uh, using similar types of equipment that utilize sound uh, um, in, in some of the deeper waters along the export cable and then further out uh, in the uh, lease area itself. Um, and the geophysical surveys that are being launched here and that started in April uh, will actually be continuing through August. And so uh, more than likely that you'll see uh, Kelsey and myself coming back to you uh, uh, with a similar uh, update once this particular phase has uh, completed. Uh, and there's probably going to likely be a, a series of new vessels that we'll be talking about. Um, Kelsey, I know, um, has uh, been reaching out and, and doing some work with some of the tribal uh, communities around uh, and uh, helping out with um, the local orientation uh, to some of the survey crews in the westerly as it does make its way back to port uh, in Falmouth nightly. And um, yeah, well, at this point, maybe I could turn it back over to Kelsey uh, to talk a little bit about some of the fisheries uh, and uh, tribal liaison work. Sure, yep. Um, so we've been able to meet with all of our tribal stakeholders to be able to tell them about this survey work and we share data with them. Um, you know, we sh we've shared the um, geophysical core data from last year and, you know, we plan to share the data results from um, this round of survey work as well. 
Um, we do have a fisheries liaison officer. His name is Joel Southall, more than happy to give you his contact information um, that works with our fishery stakeholders and engages them, lets them know about what's going on and handles you know, any type of um, you know, fisheries related issues that could happen when the vessels are out on the water. Um, but Joel does a great job of coordinating with all of those fishermen out there. Um, and yeah, we've coordinated with um, the Coast Guard, other fleets, um, and this is just a snapshot of our website, which um, does post Mariner updates once in a while to be able to stay on top of all this, but. That's great. Um, and we welcome any of your questions. And as Kelsey noted, uh, if, if um, you'd like to, for more information, feel free to sign up and contact us. And uh, we're always trying to update our website as new activities and new information is available. All right. Thank you. Uh, have you guys, do um, you have any public outreach um, scheduled yet? Uh, well, actually, last night we held a, a virtual town, uh, virtual open house, uh, and we had uh, about uh, 300 attendees uh, virtually oh, attend. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we had our. So that was, um, uh, and, and we planned a, a series of open houses to continue. You know, we'll see. Um, you know, we, we need to contemplate now what they call a hybrid uh, type arrangement, where we do probably a mix of virtual and in person to the extent that they're. Uh, allowed. So we're definitely been following that and, you know, uh, hoping for uh, this type of uh, you know, situation where we can do some person engagements if, if that's, you know, possible. And since we last met you in the fall, we've been able to meet with lots of groups individually in Falmouth. So we've been able to meet with um, students at Falmouth Academy. We've been able to meet with the League of Women Voters. Um, Falcon, of course, is a group that we work very closely with. Um, the Falmouth Heights Mayor Vista Neighborhood Association, Falmouth Town Democratic Committee. I mean, there's lots of groups that we've been able to hold um, virtual presentations for um, throughout the past few months. Excellent. All right. Does anybody have any comments or questions for Kelsey and Chris? I, I have a question. Do we have a timeline? I timeline, yes. Yeah. Sure. So, um, you know, uh, there's a slide, you know, I could show you a point that has the, the graph where the project is located. We're in what's called the site assessment phase of the project development. And so the next phase will be the permitting and regulatory phase. So we expect that that will uh, commence in 2022. So at the very beginning of next year. And, um, you know, we hope to begin delivering power from this project by the mid 2020s. Uh, and so what that means essentially is that the permitting process will start next year and will take a few years. And then the construction process itself takes a couple of years. And then, um, you know, we, we will be delivering, you know, electricity to our customers, um, you know, in line with our contractual obligations by the mid 2020s. Yep. That's what I'm looking for. We, we know permitting, sure. we know permitting takes a long time. Oh we yeah. Know, we know, but uh, you know, takes a long the, time. but as you are all familiar, uh, you know, the, uh, the country actually permitted its first uh, major, you know, offshore wind farm, uh, you know, with the announcement on, on Vineyard Wind. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, it, you know, it's naturally expected that, um, you know, all of that process should, um, you know, allow for um, at least some of the questions to be asked, you know, know that are known to be asked in, in, a, in a somewhat of an efficient process for the many other projects. And, and you know, the, the country is really on the, on the, the mark of a, a major revolution and how it generates power from you know the offshore arena up and down the Atlantic coast. And so there's tremendous amount of demand uh, for this types of power from all kinds of states. And, and that means uh, you know there's a tremendous and growing amount of, of national uh, you know and state level support that we hope will will help bring you know projects like this online you know so that we can address you know our climate needs. Okay, thank thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Chris, is there an avenue um, for citizens to reach out to you if they have any questions about the project? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can reach us at uh, info at mayflowerwind.com or you know, uh, my, my, my email is christopher.hardy uh, at mayflowerwind.com as well. All right. Thank you very In much. In my email, we have um, a Falmouth page specifically for Falmouth yeah. residents with information on it. And my email is listed there as well. 
Um, sure. And I'm located in Mashpee. So I'm hoping, you know, as the pandemic circumstances improve, I might be able to, you know, get coffee with some people and start talking about the project in person this summer, hopefully. Okay, and I good. do think we have one question in the chat. Um, I could just read that from, from Paul. It says, will a magnetometer survey be conducted to identify possible archeological sites along the corridor? Um, I, I know that archeological studies are a big part of our survey work. I'm not sure about the specific magnetometer device, um, but I know that when we work with the tribes, um, we make sure to have an archeologic archaeologist or um, someone who studies archaeology. I can't say the word, but um, anyways, yes, that's a big part of our survey work. And that's why the tribes are so involved so that we share that data with them to make sure that any, you know, important historical resources are noted and that they're aware. Um, when we conducted geotechnical boring surveys at Falmouth Heights Beach and Surf Drive Beach, we had an archaeologist on site um, who was able to look at those cores and you know identify if there were any important historical resources that we were coming across. Um, and someone else in the chat asked, Molly asked, how do you advertise the open houses? Um, so we tried to advertise the open houses through lots of promotion channels. Um, if you sign up for our newsletters by going to our website, That's one way to stay really informed with all of the events we're doing. Um, we try to spread flyers around town in Falmouth. Um, I always go to the Coffee O to drop off information. Um, and also, you know, we have, I have my personal list of groups in Falmouth. So if you're part of, you know, Falcon or different um, groups and organizations in Falmouth, we try to spread information through these different groups to get to people. But in this virtual world, it is difficult to spread the news wide and far. Um, so I encourage you to really um, sign up for the updates. That's the best way to stay informed with all of the events we're, that we're planning. That's right. And we also did uh, you know, post notices in the, the local newspapers uh, as well, um, as with the town offices uh, to help out with the distribution. May I make a suggestion since-, since Sure, please. That was on an FCTV. Uh, uh, going up for their new light, uh, contract with Comcast, you can also tell, uh, send in the notice to FCTV and they'll post it and it'll appear frequently. <laughs> yep, so we, we are a member of FCTV, which is really exciting. Um, and we did have it posted on their electronic community board. Um, I realized afterwards that that community board is only on their website and it doesn't show the event through the actual TV channel. So that's, you know, a lived and a learned experience. And next time we'll make sure that it's um, on the television to make sure that people who usually get their news from TV and not the internet um, will be able to know about it. But we will be posting a recorded copy of the webinar and the presentation materials itself uh, on our website. Uh, and so when those are available, uh, we'd be happy to reach out to, to you all as well, just to let you know, you know um, that those are available. But I, I say that to the world as well, that uh, you know, once we've gotten all that material uh, together, that's another incentive to go to our website. That's all good, thank you. And this is gonna, you know, this is ongoing. So people signing up on your website, probably a good thing. Then they would get notified for any meetings or anything and that's right. that always helps. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you again. Yep. <clears throat>
We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Well, I told her I. Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Pat. Harris I. Peter. Walsh I. Steve. Benton I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Stephanie Quee and David Greer, 63 Little Island Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to Vista Prune, according to FWR 10.18 10B, and to cut invasive vines. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Keith and Karen Bilizarian, 139 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove an existing deck and to construct a new deck and sunroom. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Black filter second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Black filter aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. And Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Edward and Julie Hennigan, 25 Eldona Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove a failed sewage disposal system and to install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so moved. Black filter second. Hey, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Black filter aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. And Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Kurt Moda, 20 Field Street, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to excavate and install a new Title V septic disposal system. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource error boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so moved. Black filter second. Hey, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy? Black filter aye. Courtney? Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin? O'Brien aye. Pat? Harris aye. Peter? Walsh aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Thank you. Next up. Lawrence Sec, 19 Clipper Lane, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a 10 by 14 addition. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm Staff sorry, Mr. Newman. Sorry about that. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Am I frozen or are you guys frozen? Word. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Jamie, Word, so move. Go ahead, filter second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Black filter aye. Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. 
Next up, Jeanette Root, Kevin Root, and the Black Beach Harbor Head Civic Association, 139 Little Neck Bars Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install a gate on an existing path leading to the bike path. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, um, as the commission knows, there has been uh, a large amount of opposition to this project. Each one of you should have received um, the various letters of opposition over the past two weeks. Um, so all of those letters have been put into the record and are part of the record. That being said, I'd like to remind the public that this permit is in regards only to the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw and that all of the concerns regarding access, historic rights away, private property rights are civil matter and it's staff's opinion that it is outside the purview of the Conservation Commission. That being said, staff recommends a negative two um, under the state and under the bylaw and that the resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, for the purposes of discussion, so moved. Glad filter second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Comments from commissioners. All I right. Have a Go ahead. So uh, first of all, um, I, I was impressed with many of the letters, but what Kevin said is true, that we can only uh, make a decision on this based on the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. That said, um, I, I, I asked staff to uh, whether this project is within uh, the buffers, the 100 foot buffers to any of our wetland resources. And in fact, it is. And uh, apparently that it's in a wetland buffer to what is designated as a BBW, which has a certain, um, our A and B zones or distances from, from that actual, uh, um, the actual resource. And, uh, I, I would like it confirmed by the staff whether this is actually a BBW or whether it's a salt marsh. And so I'm not inclined to, to vote in favor of this uh, and vote in favor of staff's recommendation until we have more information. If everyone has to realize that if, if it turns out that we do not vote for this, it does not mean that people cannot do this project. What it means is that the applicants have to come back with a notice of intent. And that's all I have to say for now. Okay, Courtney. <clears throat> I've been on this commission a long time and uh, I don't think I've ever seen uh, a project strike such a raw nerve. Um, and I think we, as a commission and as a town, need to listen to that. Um, I agree with Betsy and I agree with staff's um, um, position that in the strictest sense of the word, you know, this is a probably an approvable project. However, um, we don't have enough information. It was uh, discussed on several of the letters uh, that, um, that uh, you know there was a potential negative environmental impact to blocking that way. And um, those are things that need to be assessed. And we can't do that through an RDA, do it through a notice of intent. And um, my feeling is that um, as, a, as part of that notice of intent, there should be um, a, a detailed environmental impact study done. Uh, of what the potential impacts of this are gonna be on the wetland resources. And I think also that um, um, any firm that does such an impact statement should be one that's approved by this commission. Because as we all know, you can hire engineers and they'll tell you whatever they get paid to tell you. And so I think we need to be in a position to approve that. Um, so I'm very sensitive to these issues. It's also uh, something that the folks who are concerned about this need to look at 
uh, other avenues of recourse. Because this goes to not so much conservation issues, but it goes to property rights, it goes to public access, it goes to ancient ways. And my colleague, Pat Harris, I'm sure is far more familiar with, with these issues than I am. And there's an enormous amount of case law uh, and the case law is complicated. And in some cases it comes out in support of, of the uh, uh, general public and at some point it come out in favor of uh, private landowners. Nevertheless, that should be uh, examined by these folks. Uh, you can look to um, Martha's Vineyard. Um, the town of Chisbury uh, preserved the public access rights by virtue of uh, a vote of town meeting. So there are uh, different things, avenues of recourse that folks who are concerned about this issues can, can pursue. It's interesting that this has been an area that's, um, and I sympathize and empathize with the folks that are writing these letters. And I can tell you that that, that little path has been used by the public for a long, long time. I'm an old man. I'm 81 years old. But 40 years ago, I used to run 70 or 80 miles a week. And I regularly ran over that path. And today I was out there to see, to check it out and do my duty as a, as a conservation person. And I was standing at the entrance of that path for 15 minutes. And while I was there, 25 people of all ages, walking dogs, uh, going to the beach, coming back through, use that path. So it's clear that that path has been used by the general public for a long time. I fully empathize with the people on, in that area, the concerns about trash and traffic and noise and all of that. But I think this is a situation, I would hope that if we were to turn this down and ask for a full notice of intent, that not only would that give us time to look at the environmental issues, but it would also give the folks on both sides of the fence, the Black Beach people, the residents of West Falmouth and all of them, the opportunity to get together and see if they can find common ground. So it preserves the rights of the private property owners there, but also preserves an access to the public to the, to the area that's gone on for years. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to reiterate what, what uh, Mr. Newton said and my colleagues have been saying is that um, the the public comments are all all the correspondence regarding this are entered into the record of the application. So um, what what needs to be perfectly clear here is that we're addressing this based on the Wetlands Protection Act and the and the Falmouth Bylaw. The public access portion of it is a civil matter, and it's just not under our purview. Um, whether we empathize with everybody or not, it's just not in our jurisdiction. So I don't want people to think that they're not being listened to. All the correspondence has been sent to every single one of us. We've all read it. Um, and again, it goes into the record. So I don't want you to think that we're not um, sympathetic to your cause. But again, that, that's for a different venue. Um, so I think that's, that's been said enough, I think. Um, are there any other comments from commissioners, Pat? I would like to um, thank staff and the chair for articulating um, what our role is in this matter. And it is with regard to the regulations and application to this request for um, a negative determination of applicability so that the um, parties proposing the gate do not have to file a full NOI. However, I agree with Betsy that I couldn't um, tell, based on the information we had, the issue that Betsy raised. Is that a salt marsh, which has a 100-foot um, A zone buffer, which is a no-build zone? Um, or is it a um, bordering vegetated wetland, which has a 50 foot B zone as well as a 50 foot A zone. Uh, those are very important pieces of information for us to 
have before us um, when making a determination on this under the regulations. And so I would be, I am leaning against um, not voting in favor of our staff's recommendation, but I also want to, um, you know, just sh a shout out to the neighbors, don't lose heart. This issue that relates to property rights is we're not the correct jurisdiction, but you have other um, arenas where this could be um, resolved, whether it be litigation. Don't, believe, don't um, be concerned that if we ultimately issue a, an order of conditions that you don't have other um, opportunities to state your case. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other commission comments? Steve? Mr. Chairman, uh, we have to recognize the uh, outpouring of interest in, in this path. I, being an East Sider, uh, was largely unfamiliar with the path. I have walked uh, beach access to the Black Beach and the swamp, um, but only recently during a site visit for another property to become familiar with this path and connecting with the bike trail. So I walked it today as Courtney did and was amazed at how many people were there and how much activity there was. Um, but again, staff's accurate in their assessment of the situation, but um, I was unable to find an alternative route, but I think with exploration, it's a possibility. So I'd be in favor of delaying this decision. Thank you. All right. Betsy, did you, oh, you lit up, so, all right. Anybody else have anything? I, I'm listening. I'm listening to what everybody has to say. I'm ready to okay. vote though, if we're ready. Okay, I just wanna make sure everybody has the opportunity. We, we've gotten a lot of correspondence, so there's a lot of questions to ask. Um, I believe we've addressed in a general sense, a lot of the opposition to use a word um, that they have redress. It's just not with us. All right, so if there's nothing further, we have a motion and a second on the table to accept staff's recommendation. All right, so I'm gonna call for the vote. Betsy. Gladfelter, no. Courtney. Burr, no. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, no. Pat. Harris, no. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, no. All right, it is five to two. It does not pass. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all the commenters, all the neighbors. Um, it's unfortunate that there's opposition, but it's nice to see that people are paying attention to what's going on in their neighborhoods. So that, that's a plus. Thank you to the staff, because again, this is one of those that everybody, you know, we had to make sure everything was done correctly. Um, we want to act responsibly, though some people may not agree with what we do or don't do. Um, we don't take it lightly. There's, there's been a lot of effort. Um, so kudos to Kevin and Alyssa particularly. Jamie, if I may, there needs to be another um, motion for a decision here. Uh, what's the motion for? Well, you voted not to accept a negative recommendation, so you need to vote a positive. We no. don't have to vote a second time. No. I have to do an NOI. Okay. No. So it doesn't mean that their project's not approved. Well, it, it's not accepted under these terms. It, so now they have to come back with a notice. Um, so, um, so I don't believe we have. We need another motion. We don't need another vote. We don't. No. Oh, thank no. you. Sorry, Kevin. No problem. My bad. <laughs> it's all over uh, the let's... process, Kevin. Next up, continued request for determination of applicability. John P. and Kyle M. Daly Vogel, 34 Creekord Drive, Falmouth, Mass. 
for permission to construct a three and a half foot expansion <coughs> on it on an existing deck. <coughs> Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a positive one under the state and a positive five under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Move to accept staff's recommendation. Gladfelter. Heard second. Okay. Is there any comments on this one? Because it's positive. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation of a positive finding. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Christopher and Erica Devon, 178 Crystal Springs Avenue, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to replace an existing deck with new support structure and decking. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until uh, May 26th. Heard, so move. Gladfelter, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this RDA until 526. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. This, here, this RDA is continued until 526. Next up are requests for a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up, Jill Park 2 Pierce Place, lots eight and nine, Falmouth Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species removal and restoration and to establish a 25 foot vista corridor. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm promoting Maria Hickey. And I believe Tim Santos is representing Holmes and McGrath here. They're both promoted to panelists. Okay. Who's beginning? Tim or uh, I'll, be I'll begin. Okay. Just let me know when you guys are ready. Are you all set? You're up. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. For the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath, representing the applicant. Also with me this evening is Maria Hickey. Uh, with your permission, I will share my screen. Yes, sir. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Uh, the property is located at lot eight and nine along Pondlet Place. The resource area is on or within 100 feet of the property. Uh, Salt pond, freshwater wetland, and the entire property is located in land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, the application before you tonight is for an invasive species removal and restoration project in this hatched green area, about 9,900 square feet, as well as a proposed, excuse me, a proposed 25 foot wide vista corridor. Um, at this point in time, I will turn it over to Maria so she can discuss the work that she will be doing on the project if the board chooses to approve the project tonight. And Maria, I can leave this up or pull up your colored restoration plan, whatever you'd like. Um, why don't you pull up the colored restoration plan, Tim? So there we all, go. All set. Okay, good evening. Uh, can everybody hear me and see me? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, good evening. For the record, Maria Hickey from Maria Hickey and Associates Landscapes. Um, 
I come before you representing our client, Joe Park, and I have worked alongside uh, um, with Jen and Katie Taylor, who's a representative from the Salt Pond Area Bird Sanctuaries, um, to do an invasive species management program on, this, on these two parcels abutting Salt Pond. Um, currently, about 90% of the parcel is full of invasive vines that are really strangling the trees. They've pulled over a number of trees already. And um, there's a lot of privet and privet seedlings that are growing up. Uh, so what we were requesting person to do is to go in and remove the non-native invasive vegetation. Um, Jen, Katie and I are gonna meet out there before the, any work begins to tag any native shrubs that will remain. There are a handful of high bush blueberry and some viburnum and I believe a couple of winterberry and there's an American holly tree. Um, so we will just clear out everything that does not belong in there and revegetate and restore the property which will actually have a significant impact on habitat for some of your nesting native songbirds, which we hope to attract even more um, through our planting mix. So I have a lot of flowering and pollinating shrubs. Um, the Rosa Virginiana and the Rosa Carolina form rose hips that provide nourishment for the birds in the winter. Um, along with obviously the blueberry and the winterberry. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any, there's no use of any chemicals that we're gonna be using. Um, so it's gonna be a manual and a mechanical extraction of the roots. And when we are finished planting, we are going to seed the area with a no mow perennial ryegrass seed, um, which is fabulous, it grows about a foot and a half tall, and it provides very nice nesting material for the birds. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Maria. Mr. Newton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Maria, I just have a question for you about, Tim, I don't know, could you please just pull up that plan again, please? No problem. Thank you. <laughs> You want this one, Kevin, or do you want this one? That one, this one works with all the colors. Yep. Uh, Maria, did, did Katie Taylor speak to you about the area where you're proposing to put the winterberry? Uh, she did, we spoke on the phone today. Okay. And we're, we're all set because the whole point um, was that Jen and I agreed, let's go for a walk out there with Katie. and. Uh, and evaluate and assess that area where the winterberry is. There's a lot of green briar in there, um, which we're gonna manually pull out. And I wanted to replant something to take place of the green briar so that we don't have any resurgence. Okay. Um, and Katie, okay. Katie was fine with that. Okay, that answers my question. Uh, I don't really have too much other to say about this other than, you know, um, you're planning to keep natives that you find within there, right? Absolutely. That's the whole point of the three of us meeting out there. Yep. I'm gonna bring flagging tape and flag the shrubs that are to remain. Okay. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm sure Alyssa might have a comment or two. Thanks, yeah. Kevin. Well said. I think you covered it, Kevin. Thank you. Okay. All right. Betsy. I have a question for Maria. It has sure. It has nothing to do with this project directly. Okay. <laughs> but, but okay. Next, next door, there's um, there's some beautiful ferns, and they have the okay. they have a leaf, and then they. All right. For some reason, you froze. Oh, yeah. they have they have a leaf, and then the yep. sporangia is on a different stalk. Okay. They're, they're about two feet high. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the next time you're there, if you could take a look and then just- Oh, absolutely, yeah. Tell me what they are, what species it is. You got it. I will take a look and identify it for you. Okay, it's spec they're spectacular. Oh yeah, I, I love them. All right, Courtney? Uh, I have no questions or comments. Kevin? No questions, Mr. Chairman. Pat? 
I apologize. No questions or comments. Thank you. Peter? No questions or comments. All right. Steve? Reason for the Vista View corridor? The Vista View corridor is the pink section that's 25 feet wide. Um, and we're going to replant it with a mix of Carolina and Virginia Rose. So it'll, in a sense, be a one and done. It will never, ever need any maintenance um, with the Nomo perennial ryegrass and the shrubs that are in there because those shrubs grow to approximately four to five feet. Who benefits from the Vista View corridor? Do the birds or? Um... Um, it's, it's, so it's an interesting situation. All the homes on the street have part of their deed, the right to have and to continuously cut a Vista View corridor. So okay, we're not necessarily, yeah, we're not necessarily in favor of cutting it ever once we get the invasives out, which is why we're going to replant it to preserve the views in perpetuity and to not intrude into that area once it's planted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Kevin, do you see anything in the um, public chat function? I do not, Mr. Chairman. May Thank I you. make a motion? Please do. Make a motion, close the hearing, and take it under advisement. Gladfelder. Third, third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. If there's no further comments. All right. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. Yes. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. If Thank you, Everett. And enjoy your night. Take care. It, Kevin, if you could leave me on, I have the next one. Thank you. You got it. All right. Next up. Old Silver Beach Estates Homeowners Association, Lot A, Lot 1A, and 0 Tonset Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to conduct beach maintenance activities on Lot A and 1A and to grade and maintain Tonset Road. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, uh, Tim Santos is here to present. Good evening for the record. Again, Tim Santos from Homes of McGrath. And with your permission, I will share my screen. Please do. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm here representing the Old Silver Beach Estates Homeowners Association. So, uh, excuse me, association. Uh, they own the properties, lots, lot A and lot 1A at the end of Tonset Road, also known as the beach area. Um, the resource areas on or within 100 feet of the property are Buzzard Bay, land under the ocean, land containing shellfish. Coastal beach itself um, is a coastal dune. To, I guess I guess this is to the north. Um, and there's also a small little dune area here as, as well as, I think that's, uh, sorry. There's also a dune area here along the edge of Tonson Road. Uh, the project before, and the entire property is located in land subject to coastal storm flowage. Sorry about that. Uh, the project before you tonight is, uh, is kind of a, a two part thing. It's for beach maintenance as well as road maintenance. Currently, the applicant has, I believe, an, an RDA to um, perform beach maintenance on the beach. Um, and we were talking with staff about the best way to um, move forward with this project for a new notice of intent that would incorporate both the beach maintenance as well as some road maintenance on the gravel portion of Tonset Road, which is at the end of Santuit and Cotuit Road. It, it connects the two. So we are proposing the beach maintenance, which is basically uh, 
normal beach maintenance that includes kind of grading, screening, cleaning the beach, um, flattening out the, what I'll call sand drifts over the, from winter storms so that it becomes a more usable beach in the summertime, uh, similar to what's done at Old Silver Beach and Seacrest next door. The contractor that will be doing this work is George Patel Construction. Um, he, he does the other two beaches as well and is hoping to do them all at the same time. Usually that's how it's done. We're also continuing to propose to put up the seasonal snow fences, which we have shown here to help keep the sand on the beach during the, the winter months. Um, as far as the road maintenance, uh, this is a gravel section here that I'm kind of going back and forth on with my hand icon. Um, what we're looking to do is, is just kind of fill in the potholes, uh, make it a more passable surface um, after the winter months and uh, safer for the cars to drive on. It'll be done with a rubber tire bulldozer. Uh, the, the gravel holes would be filled in and, and then it would be uh, rolled, um, typical that's done in other gravel roads within the town. Um, we have reviewed the uh, staff report and we have discussed it with the applicant and we have no issues. So I will stop sharing. And then if the board has any questions, I'd be more than happy to address them. All right, thank you. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff only had a couple of questions. One was regarding, you know, just some of your verbiage in there. Uh, foreign debris was listed, and uh, we would just recommend replacing that with man-made debris. Yeah, foreign debris is kind of, I guess, a, a fancy word for trash. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just don't want it to be, you know, misconstrued as nope. all the rocks on the beach, for yeah. instance. No, no, we, 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 I did discuss that with Jen before she left, and we have come before the board in the past year with other similar projects and okay. we're well aware of the board's stance and we've discussed that with the with the applicant already. Okay, very good. And and you discussed um, that grading and screening can only occur once per year. Yes, we did tell them that that was what the uh, that that the previous approval might have allowed more, but the board was recommending an annual. Okay. Alyssa, um, do you have any other comments to add to this? I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Pat, we'll start with you. I have no questions or comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Peter? No questions or comments. Steve? No questions. Thank you. Right. Betsy? No questions. Thanks. It was beautiful out there yesterday. Well, it was beautiful today. Ah. Courtney? Just turning on broken, no comments. Kevin. No comments. All right. Kevin, is there anything in the uh, public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman, I don't see anything. Thank I'll, you. Make, I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Glad filter. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. If there's no further comments. All right, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for your time. Have a great weekend. See you guys next week. Thank Bye, you. Tim. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Next up, Alan William, 24 Gilbert Lane, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species removal and restoration. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will be promoting Tom Bunker to present. Thank you. Mr. Bunker, you're up, sir. Thank you. Here I am. 
glad to see you all again. Uh, I guess this is the second uh, uh, vegetation management project tonight. And we're doing good things for the environment. I will uh, share my screen now, if I may. And, uh, sure. All right, so this is the, the plan we have prepared. Um, as you see this at the very end of Gilbert Lane, and this is, uh, as just mentioned, a, somebody got, went on Little Neck Bars Road for a different project, and maybe it was this one. This is right off of, uh, just just uh, uh, west of the bike path, off of Little Neck Bars Lane. Um, so this project is almost entirely in the flood zone. It's uh, AE elevation 18. Uh, the, the, the ground gener generally is around elevation 11, but there's this uh, driveway up on a hill for some reason, and the hill is uh, uh, out of the flood zone. But the slope of the hill itself uh, makes that a coastal bank. So you can see we have this uh, paved area here surrounded by coastal bank. and uh, the part of the driveway going up to it, an exist, existing house, septic system. Uh, but this, this area right in here, I can switch over to a photo quickly. Um, you see we have a lot of the usual bad actors, English ivy, uh, there's the honeysuckle, there's bittersweet in there, and of course there's uh, garlic mustard, uh, honeysuckle, uh, garlic mustard. And this is the view from the from the hilltop, uh, looking out over a fresh pond, looking sort of southeast over the water there. And you see the, the uh, many of the cedar trees are in bad shape, uh, vines growing up in them. And this the whole area, this, this area right here is all honeysuckle and vines. And this is, this is the area that's uh, on the bank is right here. There is one dead cedar tree, but otherwise nothing, nothing growing uh, in this location. All the cedar trees are down on the flat area down here and uh, into, into the uh, layout of the Gilbert Lane. Um, so what we had proposed is to remove uh, uh, certainly as much of the uh, invasive plants as possible. I've generally gone through what I would recommend on the, on the level areas to pull things out by the uh, roots when possible. Uh, otherwise on the slope area to uh, perhaps cut and treat. Although I know that the, the owners of the property might not want any herbicide uh, applied. They're, they're uh, good environmental stewards. Um, but to get rid of this, and uh, to replant it. And so the uh, black dots are where the cedar trees are, uh, which uh, all of the live ones will be retained. Uh, of course, some of the black dots are a few cherry trees in there also. This is the original uh, uh, shrub uh, list that we put on. A couple of them were, have been stricken out. Eastern nine bark and big leaf hydrangea were, have been taken out of the uh, the list. We didn't redo the planting plan, but uh, added in uh, beach plum, take out the nine bark and hydrangea, add in beach plum, elderberry, chokeberry, uh, pasture rose, and possibly uh, spice bush into the uh, the mix here of, of native native shrubs. And I can point out that the uh, your staff was uh, helpful. We got administrative approval to uh, cut basically cut off the flower heads of the uh, garlic mustard so that it can't go to seed this year. So uh, that's probably underway by now it'll, or it'll be too late to get that work done. Um, so that, that's, that's what we're proposing. Take all the bad stuff out, put good stuff in um, and I'll unshare this and we'll take, I'll take questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Newton and or Ms. Bergeron. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll start off here. Okay. Um, Tom, thanks for addressing the big leaf hydrangea and the nine bark. Mm. I, know, I know they're you know, a little bit more appealing maybe than some of our natives, but given it being located in um, 
and DCPC and you know, and, and wetlands jurisdiction stuff recommended native plantings. And right. so, so thank you for addressing that. Yeah. Um, I did have a question for you regarding the dead wood and some of the snags in there. Are, is the applicant proposing to remove all of the dead wood and all the snags or would they be open to leaving some of them as habitat? I believe they'd be opening op open to leaving them as habitat. I'm okay. pretty sure they would be. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, I um, I don't I don't really have anything else to say. Um, I'd like to thank the applicant for being proactive with the um, cutting the seed heads before they go to flower. You know, they're going to save some money on on the restoration aspect by doing that as well. So a win win, I think. Um, Alyssa, I don't know if you have any questions. Um, Tom, thank you for adding those things to the plan that were listed in the staff report. And um, I think one other comment we had is we were hoping to meet on site before the restoration work took place. We weren't sure who was doing the work. Um, uh, yeah, John Rockness, our, our Carefree Cape uh, um, land management company, will we'll be doing the work and we'll, we'll set up, I can give you his contact information or whatever, just set up a meeting before doing the work. Awesome, thank you. I think we would normally condition that anyway as a pre-construction meeting, right? Absolutely. I mean, it makes sense. All right. Let's see, Steve, let's start with you. No, I appreciate this kind of progress in our this neighborhood in particular tonight. So anyway, I thank you for the work. I don't have any questions. All right. Peter. Again, thank you for all the work. Uh, no questions. Okay. Pat? Nice to see good projects. Thank you. No questions. Kevin. I'm getting nervous. Uh, no, no comments, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Going too smooth can't, for can't you? Can't all be <laughs> Being too nice. See, see, Tom knows how to put it in. He says, I'm going to take bad stuff out, put good stuff in. I yeah. mean, that just says it all. What else do you need to say? Courtney. You can say it on this project. It's it's a good it's a good project. Bad stuff's going out and good stuff's going in. Betsy. I think it's good. Like to be nice to see those trees. Nice to get rid of all that ivy. Absolutely. All right. Kevin, do we have anything in the public chat function, please? We do not, Mr. Chairman. Right. In that case, I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. Wow. All right. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. Betsy. Gladfelt or I. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, I. Kevin? O'Brien, I. Pat? Harris, I. Peter? Walsh, I. Steve? I don't know. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Bunker. Thank you all. Good night. Night, Tom. All right. Next up, continued hearings under a notice of intent. First up, J.M. and Leah S. D. Couteau, trustees, Menant 3 Realty Trust, 507 Central Ave, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to finish constructing a shed and to install mitigation plantings. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, the applicant um, is requesting a continuance to the next available date. That would be next week. Um, Alyssa, I believe a new plan came in today. Is that, is that right? I wasn't aware of that. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll have to look into that, but I'm pretty sure Matt told me that they uh, submitted a new plan today for that hearing. So that would be for May 26th. Okay, we, um, we have enough time in next week. If the plans come in, 
we have enough time. If the plans haven't come in yet, we won't. Yeah, if they aren't in, we'll have them push to the next week, but I'm pretty sure they're in. I think the chair was referring to our existing agenda items. Are we? Yeah, I'm taking a look at that. Heavy? You guys have Thank four you, new notices and one continued. And then you have three continued enforcements. So it's it's up to you guys. Well, let's just make sure that this is the last one for next week. Okay. Please. All right. This is Jamie. May I say one other thing? Yep. This is the um, third continuance, also. So yeah. I hope there really are plans that have come in. Good point. Um, you want a motion? Yeah, I think so, Kevin. Just if you would, just. Make sure we have the new plans tomorrow and, and I'll reach out to Matt tomorrow and make sure we get those. Okay. So Thank you. Yes, Betsy. Make a motion to continue it to May 26th. Third, second. All right. So we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing till 526 with the, the intention that we will be seeing new plans, updated plans. All right. Betsy. Let's all dry. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat, aye. And as unanimous, we've continued this to 526. Thank you. All right, next up. Laurel A, it says Gormley. I'm thinking it's Gormley. Um, I apologize if I have it wrong. Trustee, L.A. Gormley Revocable Trust, care of Jim Kincaid, 42 Cape Carter Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove an existing deck, pergola, and steps to construct a new screen porch and steps to install a new dry well and to install mitigation plantings. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Robert Duar to present. Can you guys hear me? You're up. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Duar. I'm here on behalf of the Gormley Trust, um, project engineer at Bracken Engineering. Um, if it's okay with everyone, I'd like to share my screen and just go over the project a little bit. Sir. Uh, everybody see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, here we are at 42 Cape Cotter. Um, we're just southwest of Woodneck Beach and adjacent to uh, Hamlin Point. Um, Hamlin Point is up over here. So um, here we have an existing single family dwelling um, in this area right here is the area in question. Right now there is a deck that comes out and angles down here with a couple of steps going down and there are some larger uh, flagstone steps throughout the yard here. Um, the applicant is proposing to remove that deck, which is um, approximately 277 square feet, including the steps. Uh, and they would like to replace that uh, with a screen porch uh, in approximately the same area. What happens is that that corner here gets squared off. Um, <clears throat> so they end with a, a couple of steps there. That would be about 315 square feet for the porch and another 11 square feet for the deck. Um, along with that, um, infiltration for um, what now would be roof runoff from the screen porch would be provided either A, um, there's that through the existing roof leaders because uh, according to the previous notice of intent and order conditions, um, uh, DEP number 253629, uh, dry wells had been installed and 
and pictures I can show you, we do have evidence of gutters going down into um, existing roof leaders now. However, the location and size of the dry wells was not known at the time of design. So we did want to permit an additional dry well on an as needed basis. Um, that would be here, um, approximately, you know, in the middle of the grass yard right now. Um, the area of work uh, would be surrounded by erosion control consisting of a silt fence, a stake silt fence, approximately here and along the top of the coastal bank. Um, the area in question uh, is pre-existing, you know, it's disturbed now. Um, it's either the deck or it is just uh, maintained lawn. Um, again, with these flagstones, uh, we are promote, uh, proposing um, some additional mitigation for the project. Um, between the removal of the flagstones and the deck and the proposed um, screen porch, we have a balance of approximately 10 square feet that we need to mitigate. And we are in a, um, a zone of the buffer. So that does maintain a, a three to one mitigation ratio. Um, so here we are providing um, 30 square feet of proposed mitigation area. And on top of the 30 square feet that we are proposing for this project, um, there is an existing mitigation area that was um, conditioned as part of a certificate of compliance for the previous order of conditions. Um, that was 354 square feet. The plantings were installed and we don't know um, the true history of it, but the plants are no longer there now. Um, so as part of this proposal, we are proposing to remitigate um, 307 square feet of this area. Uh, the 47 leftover square footage is a result of just um, our survey compared to what, um, you know, based off of the existing edge of clearing that was determined during the previous survey. Um, so I think there will be some, you know, site inspection at the time of installation to confirm um, whether or not the 307 square feet um, will be satisfactory or if the full 354 square feet will be necessary. Uh, we can confirm that with um, conservation at the time of install. Um, I believe with that, uh, I'd like to open up if there, anybody has any additional questions on the project. Um, I can leave my screen up if so desired, or um, I'll stop sharing for now, I guess. Yeah, if you would, sir, stop sharing for now. Certainly. Thank you. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, um, Rob, thank you for adding the offset for the Falmouth Velocity Zone. Certainly. Um, thanks for going into some detail on that mitigation. The commission can um, condition that those plantings are installed uh, to meet that total square foot area and it would be inspected at compliance time. But I also would recommend that the commission require monitoring reports due to the fact that uh, these plantings disappeared at some point and they're supposed to be uh, remaining in perpetuity. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Other than that, I don't have much to say on this project. If Alyssa has anything else. Um, I don't have anything else at the moment, but thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, if you would, would you explain that the difference of the mitigation footage again, please? Certainly, um, in regards to the larger the 307 square feet for the previous notice uh, order, or would that be just for the 30 square feet that we are proposing? No, the previous, please. Um, so or, originally 354 square feet were proposed um, as the mitigation to close out the previous order, uh, DEP number 253629. Um, and those were planted. Uh, there was pictorial proof of them being planted. Um, 
the at some point in time they disappeared um the just the difference between the 307 that we were proposing versus the 354 initially uh proposed was just the difference we per our survey that area um let me zoom I, actually if it's okay would you guys do you mind if i share my screen one more time no go ahead thank you Yeah, I can zoom in. Just per our survey, this area up here against the bank um, was picked up by us as already natural area. So we did not want to disturb that if not necessary. However, um, you know, we're going to have to confirm that with the commission, as Kevin stated, you know, condition it um, just to make sure that those are indeed, um, you know, some of the the mitigation plantings that were approved previously and not just you know in growth of invasive species okay. or otherwise okay. all right thank you You're welcome that's the piece i missed so yeah i got it now thank you all right let's see let's start with kevin no comments come on that's too simple pat I apologize for probably asking the same question that was just answered, but um, I, I think that it, it is our practice when mitigation plantings are required for another project, and if the staff goes out and they're not there, they need to be put in, and then any additional mitigation required by the new project is added to it. Um, I think that's what you are alluding to as well, Kevin. Um, but the additional 30 square feet of proposed, so I'm saying the 354 should be put back in, and then the 30 square feet proposed mitigation area. Um, is Where does that calculation come from, please? I'm sorry to ask you that question again. Nope, uh, that's not a problem. Um, so we had where we, that calculation came from uh, the removal of the 277 square feet of the existing deck and steps. Um, there was also another 39 square feet of um, those those flagstones, and those are quite large flagstones. They're about you know four square feet a piece, give or take. Um, so there was additional square footage uh, removed from those, and uh, and then so added on to that was the 377. Excuse me, not 377. Uh, 326 square feet. Um, for the proposed uh, screen porch and the steps. Uh, when it was balanced out, uh, but what we were removing um, versus what we were proposing equaled out to 10 square feet. Okay, thank yep. you. You're welcome. So may, I, may I make a comment? When your turn comes up, yeah. I love doing that. My Go turn? ahead. I know because it's related to what she just said. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I just want to say I think Rob is saying that they think that the 354 minus 307 that that um, what is what is that 46 feet 46 square feet is already is still there. Right. And so yeah. when all the mitigation gets put in, they'll have the required 354 plus they're adding 10 30. Yeah, right. exactly. And and if that 46, 47 square feet is not there, then the that will, you know, be included and our proposed mitigation area, you know, will have to be adjusted in the field and picked up that, during the as built. And we'll, we can coordinate that with the conservation office at the right. time. Right. So having having said that, I I have no questions about this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anybody asked. Alyssa, you had something? I was just going to clarify. Um, I was the one who went out there to do the site visit and I compared photos from before the mitigation was installed, when the mitigation was installed and what it looks like now. Um, the mitigation was likely installed about six, six and a half years ago and there are no six-year-old shrubs remaining on the property when I compare all the pictures. Um, so when we got this plan and they were only proposing 307 square feet, I was a little confused. Um, but as they're explaining, that's just how they um, measured, you know, the extent of the lawn. 
Um, so that was the reason we were gonna meet out there on site just to confirm that there's 40 some odd square feet of you know, six-year-old native shrubs are either present or not present. Um, just to clarify, <laughs> if you'd like any of the pictures, I can send it to you. Um, so that's where the discrepancy is. And then as he's explained, um, the stepping stones are being removed and a couple um, cobble stones right in front of the stoop. Those are about nine square feet. And the stepping stones are about 28 square feet. That's where the 39 um, is coming from. If that clears anything up. <laughs> Thank you. No, it helps. It helps. Thank you. All right. Peter. No questions. Steve. No questions. Courtney. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to see all the mitigation plannings, including the additional for the new part of the project, go in before we get underway, particularly since those are sort of seaward of the whole project. The second thing is, um, um, what's your construction methodology back there? Because you're putting on a screen porch and you're taking out a deck. I mean, what are you doing for footings and all that stuff? Uh, the screen porch we likely go on uh, sauna tube footings. Um, as because we are in the velocity zone, it can't be structurally attached to the main house in any way, uh, just for FEMA regulation. So it's going to be a cent, you know, structurally standalone um, and will likely reside on sauna tube footings. Those will most likely be dug in, you know, by hand um, or augered in by hand. Uh, I can anticipate if the dry well does have to go in um, a small you know, a mini excavator, rubber tracked excavator may go back um, and just to dig the pit for for the dry well. Um, yeah, you know, of course, all disturbed areas will be restored back to pre-construction uh, conditions. Um, you know, any revitalized lawn, because that all that is existing lawn now, anything there, it's, you know, we have a condition on the plan or a note on the plan, um, you know, it all has to abide by down with friendly law, lawns, um, et cetera, so. Okay, so yep. so basically your construction access will be along, if I recall the plan, along the uh, south side of the house, right? Uh, let's see, let me get my directions cor correct. About the southwest side of the house. Yeah, toward the Cape Cotter hotels. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, I have no other questions. Thank you. All right, Kevin, is there anything in the public chat function? There is not, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement then. Bird, bird oh. second. All right. There's no further comments. All right. Well, I have a further comment. I know you hate this, but Robert, you mustn't have been coming for the last couple of years because we don't do family friendly lawns anymore. Oh. We have a we have a what is it, Kevin and Alyssa? It's a nitrogen bylaw. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a town wide ordinance for uh, lawns and within 100 feet of wetlands. Um, it, is that busy? It'll be in the order of conditions. Yep. yep. Just to let you know, there's a little. Oh, thank you. Things. Yeah, I think the last one I did, um, at least that had referenced that, was about a year and a half ago. So. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else, Betsy? That's all. I'm ready to vote. Sure, you are. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Betsy. Gladfelder, I. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Pat. Paris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat, and I. Thank you. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, guys. All right. Next up, 
Sarah Tirano Flores, Nutter, McLennan and Fish, LLP, 24 Willis Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, the existing single family dwelling and garage, to construct a new single family dwelling with garage, to install a pool, to relocate an existing shed, to install mitigation plantings, and to conduct invasive species management and restoration. Kevin. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Sean Riley, as well as Seth Wilkinson. Sean, is there anyone else on your project team? No, that's it. Okay. This was only continued for, what was it continued for? It was range details. Okay. All right, Sean, you're up. Record Sean Riley, Coastal Engineering, representing the applicant. Um, before Jennifer went on vacation, she had requested that we submit uh, the drainage details for staff review and comment, uh, which we have done. And I believe she has since, uh, or Alyssa has since sent a uh, revised staff comment um, to the commission. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll just open up to any further questions you may have. I think we've pretty much um, provided everything that was requested. Okay. Seth, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, just here for questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. All right, we're going to open up to commission questions and comments. Um, this has been going on for a while, so there's a lot of things that have been covered, but I'll ask anyway. Steve, we're going to start with you. Oh, I think all the questions have been answered. Thank you. All right. Peter. Are all the permits applied for? Yes, they have been. We submitted the application for the disposal works construction permit for the septic system last week. Uh, we just checked in yesterday to see if they had done a full review yet. It's still in their, uh, their pile for review, but we wouldn't anticipate any issues with that as this is um, would be considered a septic upgrade. Uh, it, there's no increase in flow. There's the Board of Health went out um, a week and a half ago and confirmed that there are seven bedrooms in the existing house. There are seven bedrooms proposed in uh, the replacement house and the system is more conforming in that we are now meeting all of the required setbacks where the uh, existing system actually encroaches into the 100 foot buffer. So we don't see that there's uh, there will be any issue from from a board of health standpoint. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Yeah. No questions. Thank you. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Courtney. No questions. Betsy. No questions. Thank you. All right. Kevin, is there anything in the public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. Then I'll make a motion to close this hearing and keep it under advisement. Gladfelter. Third. Second. Excellent. All right. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. If there's nothing further, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I, this is going to be a fabulous project. Thank you, guys. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for your time. Good night. We'll miss seeing you. We've seen you for two months. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Next up. Continued hearings under an enforcement order. Samuel Pajkowski and Marcy Gerstenhaber, 390 Hatchville Road, Falmouth, Mass. For unpermitted removal of vegetation within conservation jurisdiction. Kevin? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I've been in touch with the property owner and they are requesting a continuance until early June. They've been working and been in contact with land surveyors and restoration specialists. I know they've reached out to Teresa Sprague of Blue Flax Design. 
Um, they're yet to have any plans yet, though, to present to you. They did ask for mm -hmm. early June. And if you are inclined, we could continue this until June 9th. Do you have any confidence they'll have a plan ready or a contact? We'll, we'll make sure they're, they're going to be present for that and they'll be able to answer questions. Okay. I, can only I just want to keep much. I didn't mean to cut you off. No worries. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be in touch with them. They're both overseas. I, I believe they're seven hours ahead. So it's difficult for them to be here tonight to answer these questions. But I know they are reaching out to people, but I will stay on top of that. And hopefully they will have something for you on June 9th. That will be the goal. Okay. I mean, we just want to keep going forward. All right. So you're saying uh, June 9th, correct? Correct. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. At, the, at the request of the applicant, I'll move to continue this to June 9. Okay. Our second. second. All right. We have a motion and two seconds to continue this until June 9th. <laughs> Betsy. Blood filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Patton, I. It is unanimous. We have continued this enforcement hearing until June 9th. Thank you. Next up is a request to extend the existing order of conditions. Jonathan Tower, 66 Kroll Road, LLC. 66 Coral Road, East Falmouth, Mass, DEP number 25-4373, requesting a three-year extension. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a three-year extension um, for DEP 254373. Um, that was for reconstruction of a house and for some mitigation work. Uh, they're still working on the approved garage and breezeway, um, but the mitigation planting, some of it has been planted, but there's still more that needs to go in. So they're considering their options on constructing the garage and need additional time to perform the work or potentially amend the permit. So staff is recommending the three-year extension. A three-year extension? Yes, that's what they're requesting. <laughs> yeah, but we've never done a three-year extension. We give them one year. Okay. It's like racing beach. They'll come back three times. Right. Or 17 times. Right. Well, the upside is the project has started. Some of the mitigation is done, so that's a good thing. If I remember this project, I think the garage was was going to be last to allow them to do mitigation, correct? And I don't know that that's relative. I'm just wondering if I remember the. I'm not sure here. about that, Jamie. This is before I was in Falmouth. Okay. Yeah, I, maybe I remember one like that, but I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, the and again, it's it, it's probably irrelevant, but okay. So, um, all right. So, what's the board's? So I'll make, I'll make a motion to allow a one-year extension. Bird, second. Okay, and I, I would say that falls more into what we would normally do. And then, it does. you does know, it? if they want to make, you know, file for an amendment or, or if they do need more time, they can come back. Um, again, it's just in the interest of keeping things moving forward. So... The motion on the table is, and the second is for a one-year extension. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to comment on that before we vote? All right, I'm going to call for the vote. Again, this is for a one-year extension. Betsy? Black filter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat, aye. All right, it is unanimous. We have granted a one-year extension. Thank you. Next up, vote order of conditions. 
First up, James F. Mooney III, 188 Gansett Road, Woods Hole, Mass. This is a raise and rebuild. No, nah, see, it's not. It's a raise and build. Yeah. <laughs> not in the same footprint. Not in the same footprint. That's okay. This is the one where the applicant had had uh, suggested some voluntary plant things, and then they ended up saying that they would just plant them all. Does the commission remember that? Correct. Yeah. So uh, we'd recommend monitoring reports. Not sure what else anyone would want to see in there. I just want to make sure that it's known that the mowing is in the initial phase only because the application kind of implied it would be regularly. That was confirmed. We received a revised yeah. application that the mowing okay. happened once. And we also received a revised plan where the mitigation uh, initially was within 10 feet of the structure and it's been moved um, 10 feet away. Okay. All right. Um, all the standard stuff, anything anybody wants to see different? What are you thinking? I'm thinking it's time for a motion. Go for it. I'll make a motion to accept as discussed. Heard. Second. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the table to accept the order conditions as discussed. And there's nothing else. For Go Susan, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Jamie. For Susan, everybody who's who's here tonight is on the quorum. Thank you. All right, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up. Craig D'Ambra, trustee, Beckles Road Realty Trust, 31 Beckles Road, Falmouth, Mass. And the quorum, please. The quorum is, you think I'm gonna forget this, but you <laughs> recused yourself. So finish, Susan, the, Courtney, the quorum is Courtney, Kevin, Betsy, Steve, Peter, Pat. All right, Kevin, you want to start? Yes, yeah, so this one, we wanted to make sure we had a pre-construction meeting with the applicant before. This was for the, this was for a pool and stuff. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any other conditions. Technical terms. You guys here. I'm not sure. If Sorry. <laughs> like there are all these fancy words like pergolas and. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know all those words, but there's a pool involved and there's other stuff around it. Yeah, I don't know what the commission wants to see on this. We were just going to suggest a pre-construction meeting with staff to go over the methodology. I have a few notes on it, Kevin. Do you want okay. me? Um, yeah, one of the suggestions, well, I, I mean, I think this is something that Jen was requesting. Relocate the mitigation plantings outside of fenced in area. They have a fenced in area in the front yard. We received a revised plan and they moved the mitigation out of the fencing. Okay. And we also received cut and fill calcs. Um, Betsy had requested those. Yes, it's on my list. <laughs> And they also, the fence had to be moved a little bit to exclude it from, from vegetation or something, but that's probably on the new plan. The fence was going yeah. to be tightened up a little bit. Yeah, so they kind of twisted it around. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what they did. 
But also- you, have new, you have a new plan, so that's what we're mm-hmm. that's what we're voting. Yeah. It was also a request to relocate um, high bush blueberry off of um, Bezos Bay line. Maury did make that comment. Um, I read through the minutes today, I believe. Um, I forget the gentleman who was uh, representing the applicant, but he had agreed to switch that with, I think it was bayberry. Um, yeah, I think, yeah Maury, I think that's what Maury asked. Yeah. Okay. So we can condition the um, blueberry to not be planted as close to the edge. Right on the edge, right. That's all I have on my notes. All right, anybody else have anything they'd like to see in there? All right, make all the motion. standard stuff. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the order conditions as discussed. There's nothing further. Betsy. Well, I felt her eye. Courtney. Bird aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous with one recusal for issuing an order of conditions. Thank you. Next up, Matt Philbrick, 115 Racing Beach Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. This is a septic repair, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah. sir. So that's- and, Hold on one sec, Kevin, sorry. Um, the quorum, Betsy? It's everybody who's here now. Courtney, Kevin, Betsy, Jamie, Steve, Peter, Pat. All right, thank you. Sorry, Kevin. No, no, I interrupted. Um, yeah, so it's just a septic upgrade. I think it's going to be a standard conditions. Uh, maybe put in something about uh, cleaning the worksite daily. I mean, that's standard, but to remove no stored um, soil on site so it doesn't leach into the wetlands. Um, yeah. That's something I was kind of thinking about with that. Other than that, I think it's just your standard conditions. Did they- yeah, I believe this was approved by the Board of Health, correct? Yes, I believe it was. If I remember right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Pat. Did they submit a revised plan? Because I have a note that they offered, Linda's colleague offered to submit a revised plan. Yes, I believe it was to talk to him today, and that was not done yet. But not I'm done yet. Jack, I'm talking to um, Jack this Friday about yeah. a couple of other projects. I can add that to the list. I think it was to add a couple of setbacks. Alyssa? Um, just to clarify, I didn't. Um, speak to Jack today, particularly on that. Um, I did look for the plan. I could not find it. It could be in Jen's email. Um, I don't have access to that, but as of right now, it's not saved on our files. So it should still be a condition to require that plan unless we have it Good. in Jen's email. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anybody have anything particular you wanna see on that? Pretty cut and dry, it's a tough spot, but all right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions based on our discussion. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to issue the order of conditions as discussed. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Sign. Peter. Walsh. Aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, Bay Ridge Realty LLC, 127 Shorewood Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. This is an amendment, really, right? Correct. Okay. And I'm sorry, the quorum? Same, everybody that who's here. All right, thank you. Um, 
Did we include moving the tree in this? I don't recall. We did? Okay. Yes, you asked for a revised plan showing the tree to be moved, and we have received that. You have, okay. right. Yeah, I didn't think anybody really had an issue with that anyway, but it's always good when the neighbors can work together. Right. All right. Kevin, do you have anything you want to? No, this on? was just to remind the commission, this was the one where they're proposing to put in a retaining wall in line with the deck. And they're going to restore the grade to what it was originally. The grade has been disturbed because they, when they designed this, the house, they designed a walkout basement. And there was no request to change the grading. So this is a solution that they came up with for that. Okay. I don't think there's, there's, I can't think of a special condition. I guess I would just say that the final plan needs to show the grades for compliance. For well, compliance, right? Okay. All right. Anybody have anything they want to see in there? All right, Betsy. Um. Well, I haven't made the motion yet. No, oh, I'm asking you to make the motion. Oh. Okay. You're going to jump in front of everybody anyway, so I will just go <laughs> there. I keep things long, and now you're throwing me off. I'll make, a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, issue an order of conditions uh, according to the discussion that we just had. And I'll second that. Berg. All right. So we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Betsy. I'm so eager to vote. Gladfelter, yeah. I. Courtney, <laughs> Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Before we go for our last motion, I would just like to throw out there a, a, a thank you to all you guys, um, particularly staff um with you know one contentious rda that you know there was a lot of a lot of back and forth this past week um and i just i, I just can't say it enough i mean it's just the the effort everybody's put into it and um you know nothing gets taken for granted so i i just my hat's off to you so thank you all for the due diligence and jamie thank you for uh keeping everybody all all heads cool well you know it, it's it's tough i mean it's you know it, it, particularly that one that's one of those things that affects a lot of people so you know exactly. it's just you know sometimes you got to just keep it all in 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 line what it what it needs to be because you know it can get out of hand you know uh, but we want everybody's issues addressed too so you know it's not always easy but i think everybody well, I think it all went that, pretty well. The hope is that everybody who was involved with that takes away from this meeting that there's a need for um, everybody to get together and sort these things out. And that there are other recourses as well for the people who feel strongly about these issues. Right. Right. Well, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll, they'll all talk and, and, you know, they will work something out, you know. Um, because it's, you know, it's debatable whether, the, I don't want to get into it, that's, that's not, that, that's over. Yeah. But again, I just want to thank everybody for putting the effort in, because um, I don't think, it, you know, any decisions are taken lightly um, in these situations. So with that said, thank you everyone. And go ahead, Betsy. I, yeah, I have another comment. This has happened to Pat and me twice now, when we go on site visits, the, the homeowner comes out and says, you know, may I help you? And I always hold the plans up and I go, no, no, not really. <laughs> you know, we're here to visit your site. And they go, you know, are you have a hearing coming up? And they, they go, oh, well, we weren't informed about this. So I'm just wondering if Kevin and Alyssa can talk with Jen and perhaps a letter sent to the engineers to request that they tell their clients that the commission will be coming you know, once they've filed, the commission 
will be coming and and you know it's not predictable when they can come it has they can come based on their own schedules yeah the operative word there is volunteers right yes right and, and you know, I, they actually thought we needed to make an appointment with them. Some of them. Really? Need to disabuse them of that notion. Interesting. Yeah, we'll have to clear that up. I don't know why 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 there isn't a conversation between the engineers and their clients about that, but we'll. Well, there might be, but somebody might just. Sometimes though, that just goes over people's. I mean, sure. maybe yeah. people do, and maybe they don't. But if you just remind the engineers. Yeah. Well, they, they might think that it's a more formal process, too, where, you know, we're all going to show up on a bus at the same time, you know. Right. I mean, the other thing is, well, and I'm not implying you guys didn't do this, but I just say to all commissioners, you know, when you go on somebody's property, always go to the door and knock. And I know particularly off season, you know, 99 percent of them, there's nobody there. But I mean, I always go to the door and knock because at least that way, you know. I mean, you know, these people see a good looking bald headed guy walking through the yard, they get all excited. So, you know, I try to calm that down. No, but, you know, just so that they know what somebody's wanting around their property, especially when you have to go around the back of the house or, you know, maybe they don't see you drive up or what have you. So, you know, I would just kind of, you know, knock on the door and just say, hey, you know, just so you know, um, and dress appropriately. I mean, you know. What does that comment mean? Oh, <laughs> we, got com <laughs> we got complaints in the past from, you know, people showing up in bike shorts and, you know, and it, I mean, again, we're all volunteers. So I know when I go, you know, I probably come from work. So, you know, I'm full of dust and what have you. And, but, so in, in other words, people aren't always, ex they might be expecting somebody in a suit and tie or, you know, um, you know, I hate to use the word professional, but, you know, because it's self-degrading to myself, but, um, but, you know, we just had issues where people go from the beach, you know, in a, in a Speedo looking at properties and it's just not, <laughs> it's inappropriate. So, you know, dress properly and go to the door and knock and just say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Jamie with conservation. I'm just going to wander around. You don't need to do anything and I'll be out of here in a few minutes, you know, that sort of thing. Courtney? <laughs> Yeah, I think the other thing it might be helpful is that uh, if we kind of drafted up a, a a form letter or a memorandum or something explaining what the process is as far once once the application has been put in and that they're going to see people from the commission. That's, that's, the engineer's show, job, Courtney. that's the engineer's responsibility. No, no, but I'm in other words, we can hand that to the engineer and say, make sure your clients get a copy of this. I think all you have to do is tell them that. Well, sometimes, yeah. extra sometimes work the, the and paper Alyssa. is easier. I'm, you know, you just have a guideline. And it I want to make, make our staff's lives easier. And that's not work that they should be doing. I'll draft it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just throw Jamie out an email or something to the app. To the you know the engineers, the engineers and the more common applicants and just you know remind them that there's site visits and you know that the commissioners are expecting to see a staked property yeah you know and then on our part just you know do our diligence to make ourselves known when we're on the property you know i just want to say that my experience though with meeting people out there is, is always very positive oh They're yeah they're always excited that they have a project and yeah. it's just this time of year particularly you know you go out to a property and, and maybe there's guests or maybe there's renters and they're not necessarily expecting you um right so, well, you know, they see some strange person walking around you know and hopefully they put two and two together when they see the role of plans but on the other hand what's the harm in knocking on the door and just say introducing yourself and you know that sort of thing that's all. I don't want to beat it up, but right. All right. Anything else? I'll move to adjourn. Right. Yep. Second the motion. Patton. All right. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Betsy. Well, I'd filter I. Courtney. Bird, aye. 
Matthews I. Kevin? O'Brien I. Pat? Harris I. Peter? Walsh I. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. IT. And for you hockey fans, it's two to two, Boston and Washington in the third period. What?